there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I've been having a lot of fun with the Ruger Precision Rifle, and in this video, we're gonna get our first taste at loading 6.5 Creedmoor. We're gonna build on the work that we did getting the Hornady Lock and Load AP Press set up, and the work that we did in the last video, which was to get acquainted with the Ruger Precision Rifle a little bit, measuring the two lands distance for our bullet seating. We did some brass prep, Basically, all we need to do before we start progressive loading is load up all of our components, validate our setup, fine tune everything, and then I'm gonna load a small batch. Of course, then I'll shoot it, we'll see how that batch does, and then refine our formula accordingly. Eventually, we're gonna do some single stage style reloading to really dial everything in with a bit more precision. But progressive loaders are a great way to go, even with bolt guns, if you know exactly what you need to pay attention to. And then other times, you really do need something like a single stage. So let's do some loading. The first thing we're gonna do is get our primers correctly oriented so that we can pick them up with the pickup tube. Now I'm using CCI BR2s here and you can see here that they do not have a uniform orientation. So I'm gonna use a Lee primer flip tray here. It's the kind that you'd get with a kit like the Lee Loadmaster Progressive Press. I'm just gonna shake these until they're all facing the same way. Doesn't take long, usually. You might get a stray primer here and there that falls off the tray, okay? Let those all get to one side, and then we just cover them, flip them over, now we're ready to pick them up with the pickup tube. The Hornady pickup tube holds 100 primers, so we're gonna be able to load all these. Now, one thing I've learned is that if you require just on your single-handed grip on this, like a pencil, and repeatedly press down, you're gonna kinda wear your hand out. So what I like to do is put my thumb on the upper end of the tube and press down with my other arm, and then the lower hand basically is just guiding the primers. Okay, last few primers, done. Now we need to drop the primers into the primer drop tube. So what I'm gonna do is take my weighted rod, I'm gonna poke the primer that's in the pickup fingers here. I'm gonna leave the rod up here. This is a little difficult with my low ceiling. <laughs> uh, we're gonna carefully pull the pin. I'm gonna get this lined up just so and our rod is gonna drop through, confirming that our primers are correctly loaded. Okay, so now we need to dial in the height of the powder measure. What we want is for the metering insert to be almost at the very top, bottoming them out, but not quite. So what we're gonna do is put a piece of brass into the press in the station just ahead of where the powder measure is. We're gonna check, it looks like we're not quite there. We can lower the ram a little bit, take the powder measure, spin it a couple times. See where we're at now, oh, perfect. All right, so that's gonna be a good height for the powder measure. Now we can dial in our charge. Okay, so I've already cleaned out the internals of the powder measure. That means that we can fill it so that we can dial in that powder charge. We're using Hodgdon 4350, H4350 to be exact, which is a truly exemplary powder for 6.5 Creedmoor. Whoop, a little bit of spillage there, better slow down. Never a good idea to be in a hurry when you're loading. I like the clear hopper, makes it very easy to see the powder and even identify it. I'm gonna leave the cap off because we're gonna be dumping powder back in as we dispense loads that we're testing. Okay, so I did make one more adjustment. I took the 30 cal drop funnel and swap that out for a 22 cal drop funnel. Turns out the 6.5 millimeter neck is small enough that it's gonna slip up inside for the Hornady drop funnel there. So, not a problem, we just gotta wait a little bit longer at the top of the stroke for the powder to fall through a smaller hole. To do our charge work up here, we're going to zero out the scale on this case, which has a primer, we don't want the powder to leak out. And we're gonna go ahead and dispense a load. I've already dispensed a few to get things settled out. We wanna do that so that we get uh, a, a valid measurement there. So we're at 38.5, I wanna be at 
39.2. I'm going to open it up just a little bit on the metering insert there. We're going to do a couple more loads to make sure that we have things settled in. We don't wait until the powder's done dropping. It's not like pistol. You're going to get powder leaking out because it's still dropping. Still dropping as the case is going down. So it's all a matter of, you know, finding the right timing. 41.5, so we need to we need to dial things down just a little bit. Couple loads here. Since we have a baffle, we're gonna get pretty consistent charges from a full powder measure to an empty powder measure, which is great. 40.3, we're gonna dial that out now a little bit more. Need to be about a grain less. It's also a good idea while you're loading to validate your powder charge every 100 cartridges or so that you've loaded. Uh, 39.1. All right, so we're within 0.1 grain. I'm going to test one more to see where we're at here. Thirty-nine point one. Look at that. This powder measure is exceptionally accurate. Meters H forty three fifty really well. So now we have our load worked up. So let's go ahead and run our first case through the press. What I've done is I've taken some Imperial uh, case sizing wax with a Q-tip and I've lubed the inside of the case next because we're going to be using the expander ball. Now I want to be really careful here with this first case. Yeah, I can feel. I could feel the expander ball go through, but I could feel that the shoulder and the rest of the case was not sized, which is what I want for this particular loading. That feels good. Priming action is nice and nice and solid, and the wobble test, we're going to pass there. No problem. I can see it's a few thousandths of an inch under. Great. Okay, so let's continue through here. There are charge, remember to wait. We got that 22 caliber hole for the drop funnel. Good. Do a visual on the powder. And we're going to drop in an ELDX 143 grain bullet. And then we'll check to see where we're at. First cartridge off the press. Look at that. Even though we're not sizing and we're using brand new brass here, I'm going to drop a case into the case gauge and make sure the case rim is below the lower step and the upper step. You never know when you may have a potential problem. Looks good here. Okay, let's take a comparison of the cartridge overall length for the cartridge head previously loaded to magazine length, 2798, compared with the one that just came off the press. So this one is 2.784, so we need to go almost 16 thousandths more. So let's do this. Let's go 10, 15, 16. That should pretty, pretty much put us where we need to be. Because I was seated too deep, I've run another case around the stages here. And we're going to seat a bullet. And let's go ahead and check that one now. All right. Where are we at with this one? Wow, look at that. We're within a thousandth of an inch, 2.8000. That was the spec that I'd gone for. We're half over. I'm going to call that good. Okay, so I'm only going to load 20 here because I want to test these out, but uh, it's time for full progressive loading. How about that? Of course, at the beginning here, I'm going to take things slow. You may be wondering why I'm using a loading block. That would be typically for single stage loading. Well, it's basically to get my count right. So I'm going to start grabbing bullets here. So each stroke of the press, we're going to insert brass in station number one. Between station number four and five, we're going to tip a bullet. Notice we're going to tip it straight into that collar there. Weight at the top. I've learned that lesson a few times and we're good. I'm going to grab another case, grab another bullet. This is going to go really fast compared to a single stage. Okay. 
Now, I will speed things up once I get into the rhythm here, but uh, I'm, I'm erring on the side of waiting a little bit too long at the top here because I had some powder spillage while I was experimenting with this setup. It's all about the rhythm, right? Okay. This is really nice to load this way, especially when you're loading bulk getting things dialed in, loading for a semi-auto, AR-15, AR-10, but for our initial loads for the Ruger Precision Rifle, this will treat us well. All right, so let's go ahead and run the press down. Well, there we go. We got a great start with reloading on the Hornady Lock and Load AP 5 Station Progressive Reloading Press, reloading 6.5 Creedmoor, and now we're on our way. We're on our way to finding that ideal load. We're going to be working with different powders, different bullets, different seating depths. There's a lot of variables and a lot of shooting. I can't wait to continue this journey. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, by all means subscribe. You don't want to miss the rest of the videos in this series and all the other reloading and shooting info that I've got on the channel. I've got a lot more loading to do here and shooting, so we're going to see you all later. Yeah.